So I was going to make my own truss like I did on my other axle out of uh, square tubing. But, uh, you know, I decided to go the easy route this time and order this Artec 14 bolt modular truss for this build. And, uh, you know, I like that it's short on the ends. Leaves me some space for uh, mounting my ORIs over there on the tube. And, uh, but the only problem with it is this axle housing has monster four inch tubes on it and this truss is made for a three and a half inch tube so I'm gonna have to clearance it out a little bit to get it to fit flush should be pretty easy a little bit of work on the grinder so I got this all ground out to uh, fit the uh, four inch tubes on this axle and uh, just got done uh, verifying the settings on my machine Always uh, test some coupons out before you start welding for real on the same thickness material you plan on welding. You know, this is quarter inch right here, so I'm going to weld up some quarter inch and uh, see the machine set right. Even if the last time you left your machine, it was set up perfect for what you were doing, you know, anything could change, and it's really good to go back and... Uh, Lay a couple of test beads just to make sure everything's right before you uh, begin doing the real work. Another mistake that people make with these uh, trusses is that they think just because they bought a bare metal truss that uh, you don't have to prep it. And as you can see, uh, I prepped everything that may or may not get a weld on it. So, you know, these do, even though these come unpainted, they do have mill scale on them. So uh, you got to do your prep work properly if you want good welds on this. Well, it looks like I got my uh, truss all welded up. You know... Uh, I'm not a professional welder, so it's not the prettiest of welds, but uh, I'm also not one of those guys who uh, has welds fall apart on the trail. So, got some good penetration, and I uh, think this truss is about ready to fit up on the axle. So, I got my uh, Artec uh, pinion guard all welded up, ready to install. Get that on there, and then I can uh, place that bridge on there after I uh, tack up the truss, we'll get that going. So I went ahead and painted most of the underside of this truss because uh, once I weld it on, I won't be able to get in there anymore. Also, what I'm gonna do is uh, clean up the top of this housing really good. Try to get as much of the uh, oils out of the pores of this uh, cast iron as I can. And uh, I'm going to paint this top part right here where the truss is going to cover because after I weld the truss on, I'm not going to be able to paint that. So I'm going to paint that before I put the truss on. All right, so uh, I got a couple coats of paint on there so I can uh, have everything on the housing under the truss painted up so that will look better and uh, prevent it from rusting a little bit more. So I got this truss welded up here, and one thing to be mindful of is when you're welding thick materials, particularly this Artec truss, the top portion of this truss is three, three eighths inch thick steel, and these axle tubes are half inch thick steel. So when you're using your average home welder like my Miller 211, and you're welding thick materials like this, 
it's wise to do multiple passes. Uh, when I welded this 3 8 to this half inch, I did three passes here. I did a really hot root pass, and then I did two cover passes here, and you can see I'm in the process of cleaning it up right now. But uh, when you're using your typical home welder and you're welding thick material like this, it's always wise to do multiple passes. You know, I see a lot of guys, they'll break out their Miller 211s and they'll do these really pretty stack of dimes welds with it, usually with 030 wire, and it looks beautiful. But to tell you the truth, on thick material like this, they're probably not getting any penetration or fusion. So when you're doing thick material like this, throw, you know, resist the urge to make really pretty welds and make strong welds. Do multiple passes. So I have these little sections right here where I need to weld this mild steel to this cast iron right here on both ends. And for that, I'm going to use this uh, special nickel 99 MIG wire. Borrowed the spool from a buddy of mine. And uh, be mindful that these 14 bolt housings, this isn't cast steel. This is cast iron. More specifically, this is gray cast iron. Probably uh, the hardest of the cast materials to weld to. You know, if it was cast steel, like these uh, crane C's, it'd be easy. But uh, this is gray cast iron. So... I think the nickel wire is more appropriate. Here. I'm doing preheat on this with map gas. I prefer the map gas over the propane because uh, the map gas burns hotter. So uh, you can work more efficiently. And then I keep checking the temperature and... Uh, when it gets about 350, 360 degrees, um, I'll start welding on it. You can also see I got uh, my Artec pinion guard and bridge in place here. And I got the bridge welded on and uh, everything fits real tight. Real good here. I'm starting to uh, really appreciate this Artec system, and I'm glad I went this route. <laughs> 